This is the Topcon RL-SV2S. This laser is a dual slope laser. It has a working diameter of 2,400 feet, meaning that's 1,200 feet out each window. It also includes a remote control and also comes with the LS80L smart receiver. To start the unit, first you mount it on a tripod, then you push this green power button right here. As you'll see, the LCD is flashing and the laser is leveling up and it's not rotating. Once the laser levels up, everything will come on solid and it will start to spin as you see right now. I said that this is a dual slope laser. What that means is if you look at the screen here, if I'm going left to right, that is the x-axis, and if I look at front to back, that is what we call the y-axis. Now also, these are marked on each side of the unit silk screened, and if you'll notice this direction right here, if I have the slope coming down towards me, that would be a positive grade in the x-axis. You'll notice the symbol over here. If for some reason I needed a negative grade in the x-axis, that's showing you the beam will go in this direction. And the same thing as when I'm going in the y-axis front to back. Now, how do we enter that grade? Well, the first thing we do, you'll notice, is a red button right here on front of the unit, and it has x and y. So we're going to push that first, and you'll notice the screen lights up, and the first thing that's flashing to me is the x-axis. So do I want the x-axis? Yes, I do. So I hit enter. Now it's asking me, do I want a positive grade or negative? Well, if I want a positive grade, I'll leave it flashing positive. Then I will scroll over here. Let's say we want 2%, and I bump this 1, 2, and hit enter. Now you'll notice the rotation has stopped. This is flashing, and what it, this unit is doing right now is this head is tilting this way at a positive 2%, which would run back down towards me, in the x-axis. Once that has leveled up to that 2%, notice the laser has started to rotate. Now that's what we call a single slope application. Let's say now I want to put a half a percent in the y-axis, so what that would mean is I would have slope running towards a corner. So, what do we do? Remember, we're dealing with slope. Red button, x-axis, no. Push down, y-axis, yes. Do I want a positive grade? Yes. So it's flashing positive, go over. Now I put in my five. One, two, three, four, five. Hit enter. Now you notice the laser has stopped rotating again. The screen is flashing, so what is happening now, this laser is tilting the unit to where I have 2% slope coming this way and a half a percent of slope coming this way. So now if this was a square, everything would be running over here to this far corner. That is what we call a dual slope laser where you have an x-axis and a y-axis and you can see how I entered the grades. This unit, I can enter up to 5% positive in both axes, as well as a negative 5 in both axes. Let's say I want to get that grade out of there. I go back to the slope button, and then do I want to get out of the x-axis? Yes, I do, so I hit enter. I scroll over here to where that 2 is, take it out, hit enter, then I'm going to hit the button again, and I want to take out the y-axis, bring it down, hit enter, scroll over here, take the 5 out, enter, and now notice the unit's not rotating, everything's flashing, and once it levels up back to completely flat, she takes off running. That covers your slope. Now, 
let's say I have an application where I need slope greater than 5%. This unit, if you notice over here, has a menu button. That menu button, by me pushing it, allows me, we'll just hit the button, the first thing it says there is slope. So I can leave it to where it's in self-leveling mode or I can actually turn the self-leveling off which would disengage the complete self-leveling mechanism and it would allow me to give this a greater slope by dropping a tripod leg up or down. Okay, and notice the unit stopped running when I did that because it's self-leveling. Also, this unit, when you first turn it on, automatically, after it's leveled up and spun for 10 minutes, then HI Alert engages in this unit. What HI Alert is, is it is a, where if this unit, after it's leveled up and run for 10 minutes, if somebody were to bump the unit, or let's say a tripod leg settles, throws this unit off, it will shut down but not re-level up. So what's going to happen is the lights are going to indicate to you that elevation alert has been triggered and also at your smart receiver it's going to indicate to you that the elevation alert has came on. So you will come back to the unit, power the unit down, power back up, let it re-level, and once it re-levels, I'm going to go to my benchmark and recheck the height of my instrument before I go back to work. But in order to do that elevation alert, it's automatically on. But if you're on a job site and it's being too sensitive where I still want self-leveling, but it not be so sensitive, again, I go to the menu button. Do I want slope? No, I don't. So I go over here. And then what I'm going to come up with is on or off of elevation alert, and then I will determine if I want it on or off and do so. Once I do so, I hit enter. Now, why we're also talking about this menu button, there's other functions in this laser with the menu. Example, when I move over here, you'll notice that little circle flashing at me. What that is is what we call mask. Visualize these four windows that the laser beam is coming out of. Let's say I have this set up on a job and I've got slope coming out of it and I'm only working over in that area and that area and over on the other side of the job there's another contractor working and he's using a laser so of course they're on total different two different elevations but the beam coming out of this side is interfering with where he's working. So instead of take a piece of cardboard or something and try to make a flap to cover up to where the beam don't come out, I can go into this menu mode. Is that what I want masking? Hit enter. And then I'm going to choose this window over here. And what you'll notice is I just closed it, hit enter. So now what this means is, as this laser is rotating 360 degrees, the beam is coming out this window, this window, and the back side, but there's nothing coming out of this side now. If I needed to close off two windows, I can do so. If I needed to close three, I can do so. But that's what we call masking, and that's what that's for. To open this window back up, I hit Menu. I scroll over to mask, I hit enter, I open that window back up, hit enter, and now I have a beam 360 degrees again. Also in the menu button is this, you can change the variable speed from 600 RPM to 300 RPM. The reason you'd want the laser running at 600 RPM is if you're using this with machine control. Uh, but if you're not using it with machine control and you're just out there using it as a grade checking tool with the LS80 smart receiver to save on battery life, I really don't need this running at 600. I can run it at 300. How do I do that? Menu. Let's go over here, pass mask, and you'll see a th 6 right there. And I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit enter. 
and I'm going to bring it down to 300 RPM, hit enter, and you'll notice that the rotation head speed now has slowed down. By using the menu button, I can turn elevation alert on or off. I can turn the self-leveling mechanism on or off. I can change the masking of how many windows the beam is actually coming out, if I want 360 or if I want 180, whatever it can be. Also, I can change the variable speed from either 300 to 600. That's all done by hitting this menu button and going right over to the right emblem to do so. Then when I'm done with the laser at the end of the day, I hit the power button and turns it off. The last thing I want to point out is this unit has the universal recharging battery brick built into it. What that means is when I take this out, if on the job site they forgot to recharge or the batteries died, again, clip, clip, this brick detaches. I put four D cell flashlight batteries in there, go back to work. Also, what's nice is if someone forgot to recheck if there was this regular alkaline batteries in there and went ahead and plugged the 110 charger to it, again, I don't care if it's a day, a week, or months, the way we design that is there's no connection with that 110 to them D cells, so you will not melt down your battery pack. As I said, this unit comes with a remote control. The first thing you want to do is you want to power up your laser. Once you power up your laser, you can see it start to run. Then with this, I can hit any button and it powers up and you'll notice the first thing it's doing is channel search. Now you'll notice it has the X axis, Y axis slope, the same screen that you see on front, but at first when it went for channel search, what that means is is if you have multiples of these on a job, you can synchronize them with their own remote, meaning up to 10 channels. So if I have two of these on a job, I'm gonna have this one when I go into the menu and turn it on channel one, and this will be on channel one. Then if I had a second unit, I'm gonna go in and program it to channel two and the remote to channel two. So what that means is, is why you want different channels is so if someone picks up the remote to make a correction with one, but you don't want it to happen to the other. As you see on the remote control, the screen is the same as on the front. The buttons are the same as the front. They're identical. This remote control works up to 300 feet away from this unit. And it's powered by two AA batteries. And you notice there's no on or off button. How it turns itself off is if I don't use this within 10 minutes, it automatically shuts itself off. And then of course, when I'm done with the laser, I power it off. Always remember the next day or when you turn this laser back on, you always turn the laser on first and then you'll hit a button and then it will turn the remote on for you. This is the LS80 smart receiver that comes with the RLSV2S. Of course, I know everybody's familiar with these. This is what picks up the laser beam and is mounted to a grade rod. Again, the green button turns the unit on off. This button right here determines if you want to put it in a narrow dead band or wide dead band. And what that means is the width of your own grade. And then of course, the final button down here is your audio button to where I can have it no audio at all. I'm just watching the visual display, or if I have it just a foot above my head and I do want a mild tone sound, I can turn it on to where I can hear the tone signals which distinguish between high, low, and on grade. And then of course, if I have this above my head four or five feet, then I'm going to need it louder. I hit the button one more time and it makes the tones louder for that height. As you can see, the RLS V2S comes with a nice hard shell carrying case. If you notice the insides, there's no foam or anything that can collect dirt or water. What's nice about a case like this is if dirt or water gets in it, it's easy to dump it out, spray it out, clean it out. But what's nice is these built-in inserts that are insulators 
so that when you put your laser away, it's packed tightly so that way if it's bounced around in a truck, vibration is not doing any damage to this unit. Also, it comes with the place with your receiver holder, comes with the place for your remote control. Now what's nice is this carrying case, if they wanted an extra receiver and holder, fits right over here so it's complete. Also remember, rechargeable batteries. If you wanted to carry extra D-cell alkalines or double A's for your remote or receiver, it's all here. So it's one nice carrying case that carries it all.